Hey everybody, this is Brian from Carving is Fun. In this video, we're gonna be making a cute and simple little bunny here. It's a quick and easy little project for beginners and is a great place to start if you're just looking to get into whittling. And all you're gonna to need to get started for this project is your preferred whittling knife, a pencil to make your lines with, and a piece of basswood. Now this basswood started off as a one by one by four inch piece of basswood, but I went and I cut it in half um, down the middle at a 45 degree angle, which makes this side up here about two and a half inches and this side about one and a half inches. That way you have your bunny outline already kind of set up right there. Now I'll put the template for the bunny on the screen right now. That way you know where to draw your lines and I'll also have a little downloadable template in the description below for you to download if you want. All right, so to give you an idea how this is outlined, you got your feet line right there. This is the bottom of your hands. These are the sides of the arms. This is the neck, so right here on the neck. And this is where we're kind of like tapering it in for the ears. And then this line right here is the ear separation line from the head. So what I, what I like to do here is do a little push cut right into the, the neck there and kind of just start making little notches for the bottom of the neck on that side and do it here as well. I like to do it on the corners because the corners are always easier to cut off than doing straight into the side of the wood. There we go. And then now I have less material here that I need to work out. So do a little push cuts going in there. Now I have the bottom of the neck formed right there. And then I'm going to do about the same here. I'm going for the ears. I'm going to do a couple series of push cuts here. Kind of just remove little chunks so we kind of further define that ear. Again, I'm going in at an angle. Uh, it's just easier to remove those corner pieces. Then I'll start working on the, the flat pieces afterwards. Keep in mind here we're also going to be cutting straight across the grain, so it's going to be a little bit of a difficult cut going this direction here. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp for best results. There you go. And you can see here we have like the bunny head starting to be shaped here. And from here I like to just start getting some of the other outlines uh, all set up here that way you can uh, just in case if the lines get rubbed off you don't have to worry about uh, missing any of the lines so bottom of the arms and then instead of doing a like a wedge cut into there I'm gonna do a stop cut right here on top of the foot and just come down uh, this doesn't need to be very deep at this moment I'm just literally doing it at this point to mark where the feet are gonna be there we go so now you have the top of the feet, like kind of the, the legs, and then the sides of the arms right there. All right. Now that we have this outlined, we're going to start shaping the head a little bit more. So what I like to do is take this part right here and extend the line out towards the back of the head. So from here, Take it, and we're gonna do the exact same thing we did in the front. On the back, create a little corner cut here. And do the same thing to the other side. All right, and then I'm going to create a little wedge cut. You just go along the side here, with, since I have less material to work with. And again, always cut the corners first. It is like cutting corners. You're, you're removing a lot of the material ahead of time. That way you don't have to remove it later. And it's less material you have to push your blade through. It makes it a whole lot easier. Now we have the head somewhat outlined there. Do about the same thing in the back. Just kind of... Separate the head. It's a good way to index where the main bodies are, body shapes are. All right, now that we have that done, 
we're going to start working on the ears here. Uh, notice the ears are going straight to the back. We're actually going to be taking in the ears and tapering them in a little bit forward. So this point right here is going to be going away a little bit. So I'm actually going to be making the ears a little bit shorter and leaning forward right there. Um, I'm also going to be taking in the ears a good amount here because I want the head to be a little bit wider than than the ears are. It just it looks nicer. That's primarily it. So here, kind of like what we did in the back, I'm going to do a little wedge cut separating the back of the ears here. Do that to both sides. And do it to the back here. Let's create a little indentation for right now. We're going to be removing some the wood stock right here, but it's good to index where that um, that part is. And then we're going to cut back to this line in just a couple strokes here and mirror it on the other side. I would recommend that you guys use the pencil on both sides. I'm kind of doing a shortcut here with not drawing on that side, but you don't need to if you feel comfortable doing uh, not doing it. All right, and since we got the back of the ears formed, Start forming the sides of the ears here. I like to cut into the side right there and then cut straight up. That way you're starting to get your ears tapered in. Bring that in a little bit more there. So it looks a little bit tighter in there. I might have this side in a little bit further than I want, but you know what? I'm going to go for it anyways. Doesn't need to be perfect. I don't like to aim for perfection in any of my carvings. It kind of hurts the fun of it, to, to be honest for me. I like a little bit of weirdness in some of my carvings. It makes, it makes each of them unique. And about right there. All right, cool. So now my ears are a little bit off center, but that's perfectly fine. I don't care. They'll look good in the end. Trust me on that. It, it, it will look good. So little indicator where I'm splitting the ears and then we're going to start separating them. Now what I like to do to start separating them is do a little kind of V on the top here. Because the ears are going to be at a point. They're not going to be like blocky ears. And then do another little V going down the side. So you have a little bit of a separation. And then when it comes down to the base, what I like to do is do another little triangle thing. So let me, let me draw it out so it would be easier for you to see what I'm about to do. So I'm taking a little triangle out right here. That little triangle is where I'm making like a little chip carbon cut. So triangle, top of the triangle there, top of the triangle there, and then down to this line and I'm pushing in a little bit and creating like a small little pyramid cut. And if you connect all the cuts correctly, that should just pop out. Now make sure you guys aren't like using it to pry or using your blades to pry. You might break your blade doing that. So if it's not coming out by itself, that means you don't have it cut all the way. So just be patient with it and take it out. Uh, take it out slowly. There we go. Now I got a little cut in there and it helps distinguish those ears. Make that those ears separated just a little bit better. Want a little bit more definition between the ears there. Remember when you're carving these things you don't have to have all the strokes, uh, blade strokes done right there, then and there on the first first go. Um, I like to take it slow. You can always remove a little bit more wood later if you keep enough wood there. All right, so I got the ears mostly done. Now I'm just gonna round out the backside here and smooth it out. Take this one down a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, let's 
Going good there. Take this corner in. And keep it as symmetrical as you like. I'm not going to worry about it too much. There you go. That's, that's getting pretty close. Yeah, that's good enough. So you got your back of your ears, your ears done here. And then we're going to work on the front of the ears uh, and the front of the face. So, uh, all right. So you got your back of your ears done. Let's kind of round out the back of the head a little bit so it looks a little bit more natural since you're already back here. Mm -hmm. Let's take off some of the rough spots. There we go. The back of the head looks pretty good. All right, so let's work on the front here. Since we got the back all done, it only makes sense to do the front. We're going to do very similar cuts what we did in, in the, the back of the ears to help separate the front of the ears. So there we go. Ears are pretty much separated. I'm going to do the same little triangular cut going in here. And you got separation going there. Now for me, since I use a, a certain saw to kind of separate the wood, I'm just going to smooth out my saw cuts a little bit here, make it less fuzzy. If, you're nice, if your knife is nice and sharp, it's going to create a nice smooth cut for you here. This one right here. Even this out a little bit more. There we go. Round out some of the ears a little bit. Make them look a little bit more organic and then kind of blocky. And if you want to, uh, you can just you can make little divots inside the ears pretty quickly with your knife. Uh, it's pretty easy to do if you want to otherwise you can just leave it flat it really doesn't make a difference um it is completely up to you so i'm gonna round this up a little bit here at the bottom probably take off a little bit more up here just make it look a little bit nicer so it's not too much of a chunky looking here To fix up the little wedge I made earlier, it's a little bit deeper. Like I said, you can always take off a little bit more wood to, to make it look nicer. Uh, that's why I like to leave a little bit more wood on than normal. It's just kind of like extra reassurance that you have something to work with if you, you mess up a little bit. But if you want to make little divots in your ear, you're just going to be basically making two intersecting, like, uh, gouge cuts going in here so you're kind of removing a little bit of a little bit of that wood in the ear basically these two cuts are going to be intersecting each other and it removes that wood pretty easy to do if you have a smaller detail knife it might be a little bit easier than using a slightly longer knife so this is one of those ones where a smaller knife will be more ideal to do this with. There we go. Trim that one in a little bit more. And I'm going to call that pretty much done for right now. Now we're going to start shaping the front of the face. You can see it's kind of it's starting to be shaped nicely on that side, but we're going to bring it in just a little bit so and round the face up a little here. Bring it back up here. So just start tapering it in. I like to start at the bottom and just kind of go up at an angle because you're kind of making the face point forward a little bit. 
So just a little bit more forward. And here, bring it down a little bit more. And then start rounding the face off. There we go. I like to keep my faces a little bit simple on my carvings. Uh, if you wanted to, you can create a uh, carving some eyes or a little nose. But I find that usually adding these details, especially like smaller details on bunny faces, it'd be easier to put it in with paint if you wanted to. Move some of the blockiness on the side of the face. And that's pretty much done for the head there. And that is pretty much the hardest part, in my opinion, for the whole carving, because you got all these little small, smaller details on there. The rest from here is pretty easy. All right, so I'm gonna call that head done there. Now we're gonna start working on the chest. Uh, for the chest here, you see the arms are kind of tucking in a little bit, and then you have a little bit of a, a proud poof there on the, the bunny neck, which is what we're gonna go for. So what I like to do here is create a little triangle, which is gonna both outline the, the chest puff and also the, the insides of the arms a little bit here. So the easiest way I found to do this is uh, first press in with your blade, create a, a little push cut going into that line. And this come in from the top and bottom to start outlining that separation. And then do the same thing to the other side. There we go. Now you have it pretty much defined and then we're gonna further refine these, these cuts because as you can see the front of the arms are not all the way out here. They are coming back a little bit past the um, the chest poof that's sticking out there. So we're going to probably bring in the arms to about, let's say right about here. So come in there. Be a little bit careful in here. You don't want to take off too much of the material. So you got some of the arm cut back right there. Do about the same thing on the other side. And take these cuts slower if you want. I'm taking larger cuts here just to save time in the video, but you can, if you want to, just take small slivers all the way down and do it. You don't need to take as big a cuts as I'm doing here. All right, now they got that, I'm gonna start rounding it off a little bit. And kind of cutting inwards to separate the arms from the chest. Basically creating a little V cut separating there. There we go. Let's move this out a little bit. There. And the arms are mostly done. From here, I do like to kind of trim up the neck, neck puff a little bit so it's not a big gigantic triangle right there on the neck. And then taper this in just a little bit more towards the body so it's not as massive of a hunk of wood right there. There you go, and it looks a little bit nicer. We can touch this up later on 
once we get more wood taken off. All right, so from here, we're gonna start defining the underside of the, the arms. There are multiple ways to do it. You can, you can remove a lot of wood like I have underneath here, or you can just uh, be more simplistic with it, which is what I'm gonna do for uh, this one if uh, taking off that much wood is a little bit intimidating for you. So um, I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the wood here and create like, kind of like a chubbier arm. You can see I'm just kind of cutting underneath the arm here a little bit. And then I'm going to trim it up on the side. Just an easy little undercut there. So it doesn't need to be as deep as I show on the little side picture there or in my other examples. You can just create little quick cuts going up underneath the arm and you basically show that there, uh, there is like an arm definition there. Coming at it this way. There you go, so pretty much you have arms on there. Pretty simple. that up a little bit there and then we're going to separate the hands so what I'm going to be doing here is get that little wood chunk out of there doing a little separation of lines right there and I'm creating a try another little triangular cut right there so it helps define where the hands are so I'm going to be pushing in at an angle right here going down to that line coming in at another angle right here and then hopefully if I do this right, I can create a little chip cut right there and it just defines where those hands are separated and helps define the, the section. So there you go. You got a quick little chip cut uh, right out there and you see where the hands are. So from here, I'm gonna separate the hands from the, the body there. Just do a little push cut right on that line and just come up and come down and then you get your hands completely done super simple super easy all right so from here let's start working on the legs this one is pretty easy to do uh you can do it in multiple ways if you want um i kind of like to make it a little bit like it's almost like a triangle shape on the bottom here uh like a kind of a rounded triangle uh, we'll get it on the back side here in a sec but just basically round off the, the corners is all I like to do. This one's gonna be a bit more simple than uh, than the one in the picture. Um, again, just give me a, a different option of what you can do if you want. So let's see, get up underneath here a little bit more. Separate that out. and then come up here again. There we go, pretty easy. Just round off the, the front here. And again, we can touch all this stuff up later because on here it looks a little bit rough. All right, so here's where we start getting interesting. I'm going to start separating out the bottom here. I like to make a little push cut going on the face and then just a slight wedge cut coming down to that push cut. We're not going to come up at an angle yet. Um, I'll do that a little bit later. But right now all I'm doing is just creating a separation from the bottom of the legs to the feet. You can round this out if you so choose as well. go quick little separation there and then for the feet we're going to be doing something a little bit uh, simple here 
I like to create little uh, V's for the feet. So it's not two feet parallel next to each other. They're kind of like making a V right here. It just makes it so you have less wood to, to carve out and you don't have to do too many complicated cuts. So. There we go. So you're just creating a couple little v V's going up that way. And you don't have to get like a perfect straight cut all the way back. Um, I like to start it off simple. Just basically create a sweeping V cut. So I pu I'm pushing my blade in the, when, in the back here and then sweeping the tip of it forward into the wood a little bit more. So a little bit there. And then I'm going to come back at opposite angle. And then you should be able to just remove that little chunk of wood there. Now you will be cutting across the grain here again, which is going to make it more difficult um, if your blade isn't sharp. So be patient with this spot. There we go. Just Take it slow, take small cuts. There we go. And here, I don't like to make the back part all the way flat up to here. I kind of cut mine at an angle. So you can see my blade is going in the wooden angle. The tip of my blade is still a little bit lower than this surface right here, but you can see the back of my blade is going towards that line. And this is just uh, creating a small little wedge. We're creating the illusion of uh, of the feet here is what we're doing a little bit more going on here there we go let's take it slow and you can see it's not exactly perfectly flat. It kind of angles down there a little bit, which is what we want. All right, so from here, um, I'm also not going to have the legs going straight back like this. I'm actually going to have them kind of fall in that inner uh, wedge we just made there. So kind of angling them down. It gives the, the legs a neat little look to them and um, makes the bunny look a little bit chubbier than what it actually is. So we're going to create a little push cut and wedge cut on here. And then take this, this part very slowly because we don't want to actually chop off the foot. So just slowly push your blade in. Take your time on these, on the legs. Otherwise you might have a, a bunny whose um, leg has been taken to be turned into a lucky rabbit's foot or something. There we go. And then do the same thing to the other side here. Create a little push cut. And it's coming at two intersecting angles. And not hit an angle. There it goes. And separate you out. Got it. So now you have your your legs there. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And then from here, we're gonna start rounding off this squared off back here. Um, it this is pretty easy to do. I mean, it's it's nothing too big. So I'm just gonna basically taper this part in from about where the the point of the the legs are from about right there, and then taper them in towards the, the neck on this angle. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. That way it kind of blends in. And I'm not going to 
do anything with this section just yet because I want to make sure I leave enough room for a simple little tail on there. Uh, just leave some extra wood back there. So from here, where that corner is, I'm gonna come back towards the feet and take off that little corner I made. Do the same thing on this side and lop off that little corner. Now your bunny is starting to take a little bit better shape. Here, I also like to kind of bring in the, the shoulder just, just a little bit uh, since I have the back more defined. So you can just kind of bring in the shoulder just a hair. Make sure everything is rounded to your liking on this part. Looks like I accidentally chipped off a little bit of the foot. That is perfectly fine. Uh, we're just gonna angle it back anyway, so. If you accidentally take a little chunk off the foot, it's not the end of the world. You can always fix it or just make it a little bit slightly uh, different shape. Perfection is not needed. Angle that in a little bit more. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side here. There. All right. I'm gonna round off the this side over here real quick. Small cuts is what you want to do with this step here. Round off this corner of the foot. Make it more rounded instead of square like the other side. Clean up some of my cuts there. And pretty much the front is done. Now there is an optional step which you can do if you want. Um, if you notice that the feet are different heights on these two, this one's a little bit taller than this one. What I actually did was I cut the, the very bottom plane right here at a slight angle inwards, kind of just very slight. And what this is doing is making it so the bunny kind of leans forward just a hair while it's sitting. Otherwise, it's going to sit straight up. This is completely up to you. Keep in mind, you're cutting straight across the wood grain and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your uh, knife is very sharp for that, that step. I don't really recommend it for beginners, but if you're a little bit more advanced and wanna give it a shot, go ahead and give it a try. You're just basically kinda of scraping on the bottom here to make it a little bit, uh, so it sits a little bit more at an angle going forward. And again, you need a very, sharp knife to to do this step here and I like to come in at a separate angle just to verify flatness there we go and it's just going to sit now just slightly leaning forward versus straight up and down and clean up some of the the foots Looks like I took a little bit too much off there. Doesn't matter. All right, now for the tail. Right now it's got a pretty flat back and I didn't take off too much on the back side just yet on purpose. So I am going to say I have a tail right about here and right up here. It's kind of gonna be like a diamond shape for what I'm doing here. Um, it's just a simple shape. You don't need to get too terribly fancy with it. So do a push cut into the wood right there. Come back at the other angle. Do another push cut into the wood right there. 
And then what I like to do is just start removing some of that wood going downwards here. So kind of, if I can get it in the angle, you see I, I took it down just a, just a little bit there. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side, to about that same angle. So you see, I took it off just a little bit right there, just making a little triangle. Now that I got that, I'm gonna make a push cut on the top part. Push cut in, inwards, and we're gonna do about the same thing. Um, keep in mind on this part though, of the wood grain, if you do it uh, too flat, you can probably end up splitting up, splitting off more wood than you than you want. So take this part slow, be mindful of the wood grain. I am cutting at a slight downward angle into it. So instead of going straight horizontal, I'm kind of cutting at a slight angle in uh, into the wood grain there to help try and prevent some of the wood from splitting where I don't want it. There you go. Clean this up a little bit. And then I'm going to start rounding off the bunny butt. And then the tail, to finish it off, I just do a quick and simple little angled cut on there to still give the, the tail some definition, but it makes it look a little bit more organic into the, the tail. So it's not like a, a block just sitting there on the, on, the, on the tail. So it's a little bit more of a mound. Let me clean this up a little bit too. Use the tip of your knife, take small, shallow cuts to clean it up. You don't need to take big cuts. A little bit more right there. Ooh, looking into the camera is a little bit hard here. I think I kind of goofed up the tail a little bit, but that's what I get for looking in the camera. There we go, that's good enough. It's just on the back side, no one's gonna see too much of it. All right, from here, go ahead and just clean up all the little wood cuts that you made. And there you go, pretty much done. Uh, from here, you can either sand it up, you can paint it. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is just put on a little bit of uh, beeswax on it. I kinda like the way that be, uh, beeswax paste just brings out the um, the natural colors of the wood. And this stuff is just it's simple beeswax paste, nothing too fancy. Let's take it and then rub it on just like lotion. Make sure you get up all in the nooks and crannies. And then go ahead and buff off the excess. And there you go. Now your wood carving is a little bit more protected. Now if you guys want to see some more wood carving ideas, I have a little list of them over here. Go and check them out. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have yourself a good day.